So what I try to do with hands-on robotics is uh, instead of telling students what they need to know, I tell them what they need to do. I set it up so that the labs really force them to think well about how they're going to accomplish their task. And then I say, in robotics, these are some of the ideas we apply when we try and solve these problems. Here, go learn them. And so I just, uh, I just set up the, the breadcrumb trail. I just get them started and I say, these are the ideas. And the projects are structured in a way that encourages the student teams to research their ideas, to think them out, to share that knowledge, and, and eventually think about the robot they're building and apply that knowledge. And so they end up learning a lot because they want to make it work. And I see it as sort of my job just to, to plant the seed of this concept or this core idea may make your job easier when you're trying to actually do something with your robot. And then because they really want to do something with their robot, they will spend as many hours as they need to really understand this in a way that can work in practice. The dynamic of how people work is really strongly affected by the space and how accessible that space is and, and the ability for students to come in at any time and seat their team somewhere and get working in a way that's convenient for them, that makes a huge difference. The first time I try to put teams together, I try to do it in the, in the way that was sort of suggested as a textbook solution, which is divide the students by skill set and try and, and just constrain to have mixed skills in each team. That ended up working not so well because students gravitate to working with students they've worked with before and the teams didn't get mixed up, which I think is very bad for, for the learning experience and also for my ability to assess the individual student contributions. If they're working in the same groups, then I don't know really how the labor got divided. And so I ended up actually assigning teams, but still based on a very detailed questionnaire of student skills. So I make sure that each team has at least someone with each of the necessary skills to do the project. And typically, no single student will have all the skills necessary. Because robotics is a very interdisciplinary field. You need to know how to program, and you need to know how to do mechanical design, and you need to know how to do the electrical part, and you need to understand the math. And, and all of these things together are, are more than any single student can handle, as certainly in, in undergraduate level. And so putting together teams where the, there's the right mix of skills is, is one really important part of, of making this work. But the other part, which is usually forgotten, I emphasize a lot in the class, is the issue of project management. So one of the skills I ask for it, when I ask the, hand the questionnaires out and I emphasize is making sure that there's someone in each team who understands what it's like to manage a project. You need someone like that in each team because one of the really frustrating things that happen on mo many student teams is everyone is trying to be smart about learning what they need to learn in the class, but no one is thinking about how do we actually get from the starting point to the ending point in a reliable way. Because a lot about of, of getting things done is just about getting things done. It's not specific to any discipline. It has to do with managing risk. You want to get rid of your big unknowns early on. You, you want to make sure that everyone is contributing. You want to communicate well. Each project ends with a, a P-Day, the project presentation day, where teams actually put their robot out and run a competition, and there's a winner to that competition. The students have an incentive not to cooperate with the other teams, and I'm trying to instill a, the exact opposite culture. And I instill that in two ways. One is each project has a brainstorming deliverable that, that gets brought in before the, they present their design even, and that brainstorming deliverable is shared amongst the teams. So each team knows they're going to do some research and all the other teams are going to benefit from that research and they will benefit from the research that all the other teams have done. And the other thing is whenever a student comes to me with a question that I know some other team has resolved, I will say, go ask that person. I also assign students who have uh, 
a remarkable skill in one field or another. Let's say there's someone who knows how to use a particular piece of software really well or, or has taken some math that other students have not taken. I will assign and actually give some extra credit to that student for helping other students learn this so that they learn to learn from each other. My projects aren't about getting the project to work. So this is not what the students are assessed for. And in, in fact, on, on some level, the competition aspect is the only thing that gives the students the motivation to do the best they can in the project. Because what I do for each of the projects is I set a performance metric. I say, the winner will be whoever does this best, has the smallest error tracking the target, has, does this in the shortest time. And you may use any means whatsoever to accomplish the task. You know, if, if you can can get your deity of preference to do a miracle for you and make it happen, I will grade you on the quality of the performance. I don't care how it's done. And so that gives them the freedom to, to have any design. And, and the competition is for doing it well. And what they're graded for is, can you give me a report which, after the fact, convinces me that if you did this project again, you'd do it better. So it's not at all about, did you do it perfectly or did you do it the best? It's, did you understand what you were doing? You know, your job as engineers is to understand what you're doing. This is the message I'm trying to, to, to give the class. And so there's a minimum bar that you need to pass in order to have actually submitted a viable project, but that bar is pretty low. Any team that was not completely dysfunctional should be able to, to perform that. And beyond that, they're graded on whether they know what their project did and not whether they built the most spectacular robot in the class. So they can build something that they think is cool and interesting, and they can still get an A-plus in the class. They might not win the competition, but if they're doing this for kicks because they want to see if this wacky robot can outperform something that's, that's boring and, and that the other team is building, they can do that, and some teams have done that. 